What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Sparkman. I'm a game developer and today I want to show you an alternative to Click Diffusion. Uh, Click Diffusion is a game engine that allows you to make games uh, but you have to pay for it. So it's a good game engine but uh, if you're looking for a cheap alternative and when I mean cheap I mean free I mean, you don't have to pay anything for G develop. The main concern is, okay, it's free, is it going to be good? Uh, sometimes we tend to think that um, because it's free, maybe it's not good. But actually, the best game engine on the market is actually free. And of course, we're talking about um, Unreal Engine 4 and Unity. But the top game engines right now are actually free. And I should probably mention Godot. Uh, I think there should be a free version of Game Maker. Maybe games should have like a watermark or something, I don't, I'm not sure. That's up to you, your games, I, I I have no control over that. Now, a lot of people think I work for Click Team, and I actually don't. I, I get a lot of emails uh, about uh, complaints about the software, and uh, yeah, I'm here to tell you that uh, I actually don't don't work for they Actually, the Click Team banned me a, a while back. We won't go into these specifics, but uh, yeah, just... Uh, that's that's a story for another day, all right. But uh, yeah, so um, I still use Fusion every so often, depending on the project, okay? Because uh, as you know, that I am probably one of the few people that is able to handle them. just about every game engine out there. I don't think I haven't found one game engine that I can actually use, okay? And if you do find one, please forward me a link, okay? And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see about that. So if you're looking to create a game for free, okay, uh, GDevelop it's a great alternative. Okay, it requires no programming, and yeah, it's it's free. Did I mention it's free? I think I said free like ten times already. So today I want to show you how to create a very simple platformer in uh, GDevelop. Okay, we're not gonna use the template. We're going to start from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, get started. All right. So, uh, what we want to do is that uh, we want to create a new project, okay? We are not going to use any of the uh, templates, we're going to go empty, okay? So let's make a scene, because you have no scenes, now we have one. Double click on it, and here is our scene. So we want to change the size of the scene, we can go to game settings, go to properties, and we want to change this uh, to maybe something more like, I don't know, um, Something small, just so we can see what's going on. 640 by 480. And you could make it uh, 1280 by 720 if you wanted to. This will be landscape. And uh, right away you can set the uh, name for your game for Android. Uh, you don't have to if you plan to create a game just for PC. Uh, notice that you can also um, put ads on this for ad mode and um, for Android and iOS, which is great. A free game engine that allows you to monetize your games with ads. How cool is that? Uh, I know in Fusion you have to pay for that. You don't have to pay for that in GDevelop. Wow, how amazing is that? The author name, of course, is going to be Sparkman. So there is our stage size. Uh, I'm making it small just for this example. Now we have no assets, so we want to um, add our objects here okay we want to create a sprite and we want to uh, add an animation okay now to make pictures uh, gdevelop uses uh, piscal or piscal I really know I really don't know how that's pronounced and uh, this is 32 by 32 so this allows you to create your own pixel art now everyone knows that piscal is the best pixel art editor out there so right there that's a plus okay so I know click team fusions um, a pixel editor is uh, next to terrible okay it's not bad but I mean I wouldn't even compare it to Piscal. okay this thing is a beast now just because the program is very good that doesn't mean that you're going to create uh, something very good right from the beginning like me like check it check this out yeah we're gonna make something terrible right now uh, we are simply going to fill this with a color. Oh, that's kind of bright. There we go. And uh, let's give... Uh, do, should, should we give these eyes? I guess we should give these eyes. Um, 
make him happy. Okay. Okay, we're gonna save this. Now we're keeping it simple, guys. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can you can click here to edit the uh, collision mask, but you don't have to. I think it's fine like that. So apply this, and uh, maybe we can give this a name. So rename this to um, let's just call it uh, red or red one or whatever you want to call it. You can drag this here and place it on the screen. And if you press this button here, this allows you to launch the um, the game. But you can see that uh, when I press the keys, nothing happens. Okay. And why would anything happen? We haven't done anything with this. So first, let's create another um, sprite. Uh, this time we're going to create a tile sprite. Select the image. Let me just make something green here to represent the ground. There we go. And uh, some kind of um, dark green. Oops. Okay. Because this will be the ground. You can see here the um, a preview of what this will look like once you put this into the game. There you go. So let's rename this to grass. There you go. Le grass. Oops. Drag this here. And uh, right away you can tile this. That is your ground. Again, if you uh, press the wrong button, you will notice that nothing happens in this up higher. There you go. So let's give this little guy a behavior. Right click on it and let's go edit object. We're going to go to behaviors and let's make this a platform character. Okay, so uh, you can use the default controllers if you wanted to, or you can create your own. Uh, for this example, we're going to leave it like that. Alright, so let me apply this. If you run this, you can see that uh, now we have gravity. Okay. Now you don't need to program anything. All you need to do for the ground is uh, right click on it, edit object, go to behaviors, and let's make this a platform. There we go. And now we have a little jumping guy. Let's make something simple. Let's add another object, another sprite, and um, I'm just going to paint these any color. This will be our respawn point. Rename. Respawn. We're going to place this um, Oops, we're going to place this over here. Let's go to the scene events. Add a new event. New condition. And at the beginning of the scene, we want to make that object invisible. Common actions for all, all objects. Visibility. Okay, we want to hide it. We want to hide... Uh, our respawn point. Now if you run this, you notice that you can't see our respawn point. Okay, you can uh, make it visible again by simply changing this. Okay, for now we want to be, for now we want it invisible. Let's make another object, another sprite. And um, we want to make this some sort of um, maybe we can make a fire. Yeah, let's make a fire. I mean, and I told you this software is incredible. All right, so that's our animation there, and uh, you can preview it. Okay. Now this now now we need to loop this. So loop it. 
okay and uh, maybe you can rename this to fire fire and do we and we're gonna call it left fire so simply drag this here I'm going to start right here and there's our fire Now if the player collides with the fire, you notice that nothing happens. Okay, so we want to restart if the player collides with the fire. Alright, so let's go to um alright, so let's add a new condition. It's gonna be common conditions for all objects. Collision. Collision with um red in the fire. If that happens, we want to um Set the position of our object red center to our span point. Distance uh, zero, I believe, is zero by default. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm going to put the zero there anyways. And now watch what happens when we touch the fire. Our character uh, responds. So, uh, we can create another object. This is going to be our gold. If you touch that uh, gold, then you get to go to the next level. Let's make these... Uh, let make it, let's make it some sort of flag. Wow, what a terrible looking flag this is. Green, okay. Green and yellow. Oh, that looks terrible. Try green and blue. Try green and purple. There you go. Much better. Now you can animate this if you wanted to. And you don't even have to have this visible. So let's call this gold. Le gold. Okay. There we go. If you touch this, you get to pass to level 2. Now, I don't think it jumps high enough. Okay. Uh, so we can either give him some sort of something to step on, or we can make him jump higher. I think giving him something to jump on, it's probably a better solution. Okay. Uh, object name, we can name it here. Just call it block. Add an animation, and uh, I'm gonna try and make one of those Mario blocks. Okay, uh, greenish blue. All right, solid color. I'm going to use the line tool. It is a little darker. There we go. Now I want this lighter, darker, darker. Uh, this would be dark, darker, and this a little lighter. Okay. And we're going to uh, place this over here, and we're going to make sure that this is also a um, a platform object. Okay, try it out. So now we have something to jump on. Now we don't have any event for the flag, so and that's because we need to uh, create another uh, level. Okay, so let's go to our scenes. And uh, this will be scene one. Okay, just let me rename it. Uh, this will be um, level one. So we want to simply copy this and we want to paste it. Uh, rename this to level two. <clears throat> okay. 
So let's go to events and let's create a new event. Another collision, red and the gold. If that happens, we simply send our game to the next level. Change scene. We're going to change the uh, scene name to level 2. Make sure you use the uh, quotations. Okay. One thing I would like for them to add is that um, simply selecting the level. Okay, but um, it is what it is. Right. So, so there you go. So you just type the name of the level. And uh, we're going to go to level 2. Okay, and uh, we're going to change a few things here. This is our new respawn point. You can enable the grid if you wanted to. Show grid. You can uh, place stuff a bit more accurate. Now, you don't have to keep dragging this. You can simply hold uh, control, I believe, and you can make duplicates. Okay. We can place our flag down here, down, down, down here somewhere. Now you can make the uh, collision mask smaller if you wanted to, or set the collision to another object. That's probably a, a better solution. <clears throat> so this will be level two. Let me just change the uh, color of the background. The background color. Uh, that's super bright. Okay. <laughs> All right. It will be blue. Uh, now I notice that uh, the OK button gets hidden here, so if you can't find it, um, uh, it's down here. And let me just change the background color as well. But for this example, we're going to leave it like this. This is our flag here. All right, so let's try it out. Press play. And let's touch the flag. Now we're in level two. So yeah, you can keep making games like this. Let me just uh, go to level 2 there. So in level 2, uh, if you touch the flag, now instead of uh, going to level 2, you want to change the scene to level 1. Okay, you can keep making more levels if you wanted to. As many as you like. Okay, try this out. Now, when we touch the flag, we should go back to level 1. Just like that. And there you go. Making games for free in GDevelop. Download GDevelop, it's free, and start making games. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Also, don't forget to comment. Say something. If you play Fortnite, don't forget to use the Sparkman X tag. See you in the next video. Bye now.